Welcome back, folks, for a new episode of Leaked. And today we'll cover the Swedish heavy tanks of Tier 8 and Tier 9, the Mil 1 and Mil 2, respectively. Now, even though there are three heavy tanks in the Swedish hybrid line, only two of them are actually different. The Kramvon is actually a copy of a Mil 2. It's a modified Mil 2 called a Mil 2 Alternate Number 3 version. So it's not exactly a new vehicle, a new prototype heavy tank. Now, why weren't the Swedish prototype heavy tanks implemented in real life? And that's because it's resource intensive. It costs a lot of money to develop, test, and mass produce these vehicles. So it's a lot cheaper and resource efficient to just buy vehicles from other countries. And that's why Sweden bought the STRV-81 from Britain. That's the Centurion Mark III. And they bought the STRV-121 from Germany. That's the Leopard 2. They filled the gap in the middle during the Cold Wars with the STRV-103. That's the S-Tank based on efficient use of sloping and space armor. But we'll talk about the S-Tank coming right up after this. But for today, we'll talk about the heavy tank prototypes. Now, what is a Mil-1? A Mil-1 project was meant to replace the outdated STRV M42. So the STRV M42 is more or less like a Sherman tank. So yeah, after World War II, you have a Sherman against IS-3s or M103s. Yeah, no. <laughs> so you need a heavy tank. And this project was meant to replace the old medium tank, that's the STRV M42, while providing infantry support and tank destroyer roles. It was meant to have 120 millimeter, firing high explosive anti-tank and high explosive shell. It's also small, about 2.46 meters of clearance. So that's slightly above the T-44, but not much. So it's a pretty small vehicle and has 14 degrees of gun depression, which is crazy. So yeah, this was a pretty good vehicle, but it requires a lot of resource to build. Whereas just buying the Centurion Mark III from Britain was a lot cheaper. So they just bought the Centurion called it the STRV-81, and move on to not caring about this project. So this project was canceled while they bought the Centurions. Now, the Emil-2 was a revitalization, if you call it, of the Emil-1. So it was revised, the Emil-1 project was revised, reworked, and upgraded to counter the IS-3s. So after Sweden saw the rise of the Russians in the east, so they fear a Russian-Soviet invasion. They redesigned the Mil-1 project with oscillating turret technologies from the French. So they take the AMX-13, take the German Panther, modify them, and give it 150 millimeter smoothbore gun. <laughs> so this gun is large smoothbore, fires high explosive anti-tank shells, and just penetrates whatever. But for the game, it's super broken. <laughs> So, yeah, nope, <clears throat> no way this gun is going to make it. But that's the Mil-2 project. And coming from it, they upgraded the engine, upgraded the hull, changed the ammunition around, and that's the Mil-2 alternate number three. That's a cram bomb that we already covered last video. So, yeah, that's the whole history of Swedish heavy tank development cycle, if you will, in a nutshell. So here is the blueprint of the Mil-1. As you can see, it's a small vehicle, just barely taller than a T-44. <laughs> it has a lot of turret armor, trust me. And it has 14 degrees historically accurate gun depression, but in the game, it has 15. <coughs> broken. <laughs> Super broken. <laughs> Holy crap, 15? You gotta be kidding me. But it has turret armor, it has small size and 15 degrees of gun depression with a lot of penetration, but we'll get to the stats. And here is the Mil-2 leading to the Krembon. So they test out the hull. They have a dummy turret. They were, uh, they were testing a lot of turrets with different guns. So 120 millimeter, 150 millimeter. The ammunition development cycle for the guns were also problematic, and that's why there's no actual turret for the vehicles. But later on, they turned the hull and modify it to support different suspensions and test out the suspensions for the S-Tank. So here you can see the hull being tested, and one of the hulls were modified into the artillery cannon Vaughn 
151. So that's this vehicle right here, or this vehicle in the background. But this vehicle was the prototype, the grandfather to the band cannon. So that's the artillery feature in the wargaming Sweden video history thing. So you can see the band cannon in that video, but this is the grandfather to that artillery piece. And here are the in-game screenshots of the Emil 1. As you can see compared to this truck over here. <laughs> it's a small vehicle, holy crap. It, yeah, that's the size of a T-44 with a large turret from an AMX 5120 or 50, uh, yeah, 5120-ish. It doesn't look like the 5100, but still. <clears throat> uh, broken. So the gun barrel is super long. It has 15 degrees of gun depression, so meaning this thing digs its own grave, like the Sturry Mill. <laughs> That's insane. But it's a small vehicle too. The Sturry Mill is huge without armor. This thing has armor. You'll see. But yeah, it's not a bad looking tank. It's rather slim. Rather slim. Not as bulky as the Panther chassis or the Tiger II chassis. But here you can see the good comparison between the Emil 1 and the AMX 5100. So gun depression wise, the 5100 has only 6 degrees. This vehicle has 15. <laughs> the gun is pointing downwards. Holy crap, look at this gun depression, insane. The size of the ass, super small. It's also very low, low silhouette. So yeah, getting hit is... Not as big of a problem with the AMX or with the Emil 1 than the AMX 5100. Jesus, it's like a little kid compared to a gigantic obese dude. Oh. <laughs> and here's the top to down screenshot. So it's a small target, but it doesn't have the side armor or rear armor. So getting hit by artillery still hurts, but it's smaller than average. So that shouldn't be a problem. So here's a better shot of the gun depression. Holy crap, this vehicle is going to be amazing. I'll show you guys the stats, I can't wait. But uh, here is the Emil 2. It's, yeah, not as exciting as the Emil 1. Looks a lot like the Krembon that we already covered in the last video. So the only difference I could tell is the splashboard, visual difference, is the splashboard, some of the random stuff on the turret, like the mesh or the canvas stored in here. Or some of the toolbox right here, but small stuff. You cannot really tell the difference. So it looks a lot like the tier 10 version of the Swedish heavy tanks. And that's because the tier 10 version is just a modified version of this tank. So not much excitement is going around for the tier 9 Swedish heavy tank. Oh well, but it's okay, I guess. So here is a better shot of the gun angles. It has only 8 degrees of gun elevation compared to the 10 on the Cranvon, so that kind of sucks. Oh well, but it does have the same gun, so the same penetration, same alpha, blah blah blah. Still have the 12 degrees of gun depression, so still pretty good. And that's the whole essence of the Swedish heavy tanks. Gun depression, turret armor. Same goes for the mediums. But here is the collision model for the Emil 1. As you can see, that's 250, man. That's too <laughs> So here are the points to consider before inspection. The Mill 1's hull is dramatically different than the Mill 2 or the Cranbon, and that's because it wasn't meant for against IS-3s. So this was initially produced to replace the M42, the STRV M42. So the hull looks kind of like a T-44 or T-54. It's slim, so that's pretty good. Upper plate is sloped, so that's decent. But understanding the turret is understand how well the turret will perform when hauled down. So it's the same way that the turret works for the crab bond. And if you already watched that video, you understand how this turret works. But it's not exactly an oscillating turret like the French or the Americans. So the gun doesn't elevate with the top of the turret. The top of the turret is high within the actual support of the turret. So you don't get shot on the top parts of the turret. And that's the usual weak spot for the other turrets. So, yeah, we'll talk about the turret stuff coming right up. But yeah, this vehicle is pretty small, about the size of a T-44. Rear armor and side armor is garbage. 
It's only like 24 or 20. Oh god. Yeah, no. Side armor is crap. Rear armor is also crap. So don't get flanked. Always point frontally towards your enemies. And don't get artillery, but this vehicle is small, so that shouldn't be a problem. And here is the Emil 2. As you can see, it looks a lot like the Cranbon. So it's the same points to consider from the Cranbon video, but it's practically the same model as the Cranbon. With a few slight uh, collision model difference, but not that much. The rear is still the same crap, but it does have spare track links protecting it, so bump. still not much. Not much armor. And here is the comparison between the ML1 and the Cranbon. As you can see, the Cranbon has pretty decent turret. It's 170mm sloped at about 45 degrees, giving you 277.61mm effective, which is pretty good. Not haul down. If you haul down with it, it's even better. But take a look at the armor for the ML1. It's 250mm. <laughs> Sloped at about 50 degrees. So you could say this is actually 220-ish, but still, that's super thick. So the effective armor is at least 290 to 326.35. <laughs> wow! <laughs> and that's not hauled down. That's just normal angle. If you haul down with this thing, it's impenetrable. Just... <laughs> oh god, this thing is just freaking broken so gun support is about 250 so that's this piece right here you could you know angle a shot and trap it into the turret ring ish right here but it's pretty hard so don't even think about it you also could shot trap into the upper hull right here and the driver hatch right here but it's a small target and usually when you're facing off against one of these vehicles it's likely going to be hauled down, so just don't even think about it. Upper plate is about 174, so that's good against tier 7 vehicles like the D25T. So it's okay. It's alright. It's like a T29-ish, but it's workable. Lower plate, 130, sloped, so about 183 millimeter effective. So not that bad for a small vehicle. This vehicle is small, remember? It's about the same size as a T-44, so the armor is actually amazing for such a small vehicle. And here is the Emil 2 compared to the Cranbon. As you can see, subtle differences, but not much, so not that dramatic. There is a better plating for the cheeks right here, but it increased the size of the hull by a little bit, so trade-off. There's a better support for the gun encasement right here, so this armor is a little bit thicker than this armor, but... Not much, not really. The driver hatch is less sloped, less well sloped as the Cranbons. So this might be the IS-3's uh, gun access port thing for this vehicle. So if you just shoot right here, you could overmatch the sloping and kill the driver or damage the turret ring, whatever, wreck havoc. Double plate is not as well armored, so it's only 95 compared to 105, so 10 millimeter less. And the lower plate is about 20 millimeter less, so not as well protection as the Cranbon, but these two vehicles look very similar, very, very similar. So here's the side shot of the two vehicles. As you can see, side armor is gar <laughs> garbage side armor, just no. Yeah, you do have some armor at the front, but it, when you get shot, you like it getting shot right here because of the turret is so huge so you'll get shot right here damage your ammo rack same goes for this vehicle right here email two same goes for the side armor so black don't even depend on your armor you do have slightly better gun encasement armor for the email two right here that's this strip which is about 100 ish not much but still better than the 50 or 40 right here so high explosive to this part of the gun damages the gun and kind of, you know, destroy your turret, maybe. So, wreck havoc when you get shot right here. So, just don't get flanked. Yeah, just don't get shot in the sides. <laughs> That's always a bad idea. And this side armor is garbage. So, don't even side scrape. No, no, don't, don't even do that. Bad idea. And here is the gun depression on these two vehicles. Now, these two vehicles doesn't have the traditional oscillating turret. So, these are more like the Cranbong. 
uh, turret, which has the support of the oscillating part of the turret in the back or up towards the top. So I already demonstrated this before, but I'll demonstrate it again. So here's the T57 Heavy. It has the support right here. That's this triangle right here. That's the support for the oscillation part of the turret. The oscillation part of the turret is right here. So that's how the turret rotates up and down and shoots. That's how the T57 Heavy works. That's how the AMX 50B works. That's the support right there. And the oscillation part is right here. So whenever you're hauled down, whenever you're pointing your gun at a target, when they shoot at you, it's always parallel to the top of the turret. And that's why you're getting penetrated. Also the cheeks or the supports are not that strong. So you will get penetrated and it does hurt. So these vehicles are not really heavy tanks. These are large medium tanks that pumps out a lot of damage. Whereas for the mills, these are heavy tanks with turret armor. So as you can see, this is like 160 on the cheeks and 250 at the front slope upwards, just insane. But they have the support all the way up here. And when they get shot at, it will hit the support. It will not hit the top of the turret. So this will increase the sloping of the armor and just automatically bounce. Same goes for Emil too. Oops, that's a terrible outline, but you know what I mean. So yeah, insane turret armor. Just do. When you get shot, it will hit the support. And when the support hits, it just bounces. Just no. Unlike the oscillation part of the T57 or the AMX 50B. So it's a different turret. Now, here are the main stats for the Emil 1. It's going to be a tier 8 normal Swedish heavy tank coming from the Leo medium tank. Has a crew of 3 with commander, gunner, and driver. Normal matchmaking. 2.5 uh, million credits, so that's the av that's the average normal. Has 1,500 hit points, which is actually pretty good. For such a small tank, that's... wow! <laughs> that's actually better than the French, considering. And it does have the armor, too. <laughs> so, inc eh, just incredible. Engine power is 550, weighs about 30 tons. So, horsepower per ton ratio is pretty good, 19.1. Top speed of 45 kilometers per hour, reverse of 16, hull traverse of 32 degrees per second, which is above average. That's pretty decent. Turret traverse is below average, 20.9 degrees per second, but it's a big gun with a different turret, so I presume, okay. Has the same terrain resistance as the AMX 5100, so below average for the hard and above average for medium and soft. So compare this with AMX 5100, has better horsepower per ton ratio by two about. So this thing does shift pretty well. And the hull traverse also pretty decent too. So this thing is like a medium tank. <laughs> has 380 meters of view range. That's above average. Great radio, so superfluous, uh, above 700. So amazing. Hull armor is 100 at the front, 20 at the sides, 80 in the rear. So eh, but this is a, uh, well, this is a uh, red herring by Wargaming. It's not exactly it's not exactly 180 at the front. It's 250. You saw with the collision model, it's 250. It's not 180. That's for the cheeks. And that's for the cheeks. It just <laughs> side of the turret 35, rear 20. So, yep, side armor, rear armor, garbage. But the gun is 105 millimeter, has 50 rounds, fires APCR, APCR for the gold, and high explosive. Penetration for default ammo is pretty high, 227, that's great. For a tier 8 heavy tank, that's amazing. Alpha is rather okay, 320. That's slightly below average, but that's because of the Russian guns, the 390. So 320 is fine. Has a 5 round clip, where the fire is about 5.74 rounds per minute. DPM is average, 1839. So that's relatively good. For our autoloader, that's pretty decent. Now, shell reload at 3.75 rounds, or 3.75 seconds between each round. That's kind of long compared to the 2.73 seconds for the AMX 5100. So, yeah, intershell reload is kind of long, and takes about 37 seconds for the whole clip to reload. So, eh, you still have the turret to bounce the shots while you're scouting people. <laughs> Accuracy 0 
very good above average aim time is below average 2.88 seconds but you could help that with gun enhanced gun lane drive and vertical stabilizer and vents so it's not that big of a problem gun depression 15 degrees gun elevation 15 degrees <laughs> man this thing is broken here is the mil 2 stats so it's going to be a tier 9 normal swedish heavy tank crew of three commander gunner driver costs 3.5 million credits 1700 hit points below average that sucks so not as crazy good as the mil 1 665 horsepower engine though uh, 36.9 tons so horsepower per ton ratio is only 18.02 not as good revving up as a mil 1 top speed is better 56 kilometers per hour reverse is 18 Hull traverse takes a knacker oh, 25 degrees per second turret is the same so yeah and terrain resistance is below average across the board view range doesn't get changed that sucks Hull armor is 95 at the front, 30 at the sides, 30 at the rear. Turret armor is 170 at the front, 60 at the sides, 30 at the rear. So, it's the same radio, same view range. Crappier terrain, resi uh, terrain resistance, crappier hull traverse, crappier power to horsepower per ton ratio, and not that great of an improvement to the top speed or health. So, ugh, ugh. fires APCR, high explosive anti tank, and high explosive with 120 millimeter carries 40 rounds like the Kremlin so the same gun 242 millimeters of pen with default APCR so yeah I mean it's below average for tier 9 it's dramatically below average for a tier 10 how do I feel about 242 millimeters of pen for a heavy tank at tier 9 I mean usually you have the M103 which has the E5's gun or you have the E75 which also has the high penetration 128 wait yeah e75 has 128 so it's the yak tiger's gun like 249 millimeter pin so i'm expecting somewhere around 250 millimeter pin for tier 9 heavies and for tier 10 maybe 260 255 but 242 is kind of low i mean it's not that bad but it's kind of low alpha is only 400 so same gun has a four round clip fires about 4.4 .4 rounds per minute dpm is only 1772 reloads about 40 seconds so five seconds between each shot that's long that's super long i mean it's four seconds on the creme bomb but it's i mean 3.75 seconds for a smaller gun on the email one is dramatically better than five seconds for a bigger gun that's crazy accuracy 0.3 Six four, same as the mil one. So, it's average now for tier nine. Aim time is still long, two point eight eight seconds, and only twelve degrees of gun depression with only eight elevation. So, uh, not that exciting, right? But here are the main stats for the mil one. So take a notice of all the stuff. So, it's all pretty good. I mean, dispersion is not that great, but it's a it's workable, right? Traverse is good. Camel rating is actually pretty decent. It's a small vehicle, so camel rating, yeah, pretty decent. Top speed, hull traverse, yeah, horsepower per ton ratio, well, pretty good. Health is below average, but not much, like 50. Eh, that's still decent. I mean, penetration is amazing. DPM is average for an autoloader. That's actually great. So, Emil 1, great. Emil 2 is, uh, yeah, <laughs> red across the board does have better camo than the average but th that's not saying much so yeah red across all the board Oof. all right here are the final thoughts and opinions about the email one so oh my god so overpowered that's not even funny <laughs> makes tier 10s or makes the tier 10 cranvon look stupid and useless just oh my god the power level on this thing is insane it has the mobility has the hull traverse, the view range, the penetration, the DPM for autoloader. That's insane. Also accuracy, gun depression, and turret armor of 250mm. You know, flat. Not even counting the slope. Insane. 
Turret Traverse is a little bit slow. Industrial reload time is a little bit long. Alpha is not that big, but still not that big of a weakness though. And garbage side and rear armor, so whatever. But it's basically an AMX 5100 that has armor and a lot faster and gun depression <laughs> and more alpha. But yeah, holy crap. Or T uh, T69 that basically has armor and speed. Wow. So adding enhanced gun lane drive, adding vertical stabilizer and vents dramatically boosts the weakness. That's the 2.88 aim time seconds. So yeah. Is it worth it? It just smokes the AMX 5100 and the T69 as the best tier 8 auto loading medium slash heavy tank. Insane. <laughs> Godly turret armor, 250 millimeter flat, not even sloped. It's 250 millimeter flat with sloping. That's like 320. Holy, it defeats almost normal AP shells, almost normal high explosive anti tank shells. It's almost impenetrable. It's even better than the T32 in some cases. Holy, <laughs> oh god, it's fast, impenetrable armor. Turret, so correctly positioned. Yeah, the turret's impenetrable. High penetration for the gun, decent alpha, view range, health, burst potential, because the intershell reload time is not that long. 3.75 seconds is kind of long, but not that bad as the 5 seconds or 4 seconds, so it's alright. So it's broken. <laughs> it's way better than the Cranbon. Oh my god, just nah. This is the tank you want to work for when you're playing the Swedish Hybrid line. This is it, alright? Don't play with the tier 9, don't play with the tier 10, just go for this vehicle. It's broken as all hell. So here are the final thoughts about the Emil 2. So compared to the Cranbon and the Emil 1, boring. So immense drop, immensely drop in power levels, just staggering high drop in the power levels. It has the, gun, it has the gun depression, the high gun depression, the horsepower per ton uh, ratio, and the speed, but yeah, that's the same with the Cranbon, so you already have that with your mill 1. Also, DPM is not that great, aim time not great, penetration, either shell reload is long, traverse, ugh, health, gun elevation, crap, view range is crap. So basic repeat of the Cranbon, which I already previously covered, but it has an inferior gun to the 120 on the AMX 5120 or the 105 on the T54E1. So it's not exactly great of a auto-loading vehicle, a burst vehicle. So like the Cranbon, this is a creeper. This is like a stalking watcher type of tank. It likes to watch you and can't do anything about it type of vehicle. So all below average stats, only one selling point is the turret and the gun depression. So. That's the armor part of the turret. So same bad gun handling, or even worse than the Cranbon, with longer intershell reload time and less gun elevation and lower DPM. Even the stock 105mm, which is shared on the Emil 1, has less penetration by 10mm. What the frick? Uh, I'll, I'll show you guys. Whoop. So as you can see right here, with the stock 105mm, it's 217 but the same gun on the Emil 1 has 227. What the frick, right? <laughs> oh my god, this tank is just... <laughs> so final thoughts? Coming from the Emil 1, why even waste the credits on this vehicle? Just no. I mean, stop at the Emil 1. It's like the charioteer from the FE4005 line, stage 2 line, whatever. You stop at the tier 8, you don't play with a tier 9 or tier 10, it's not worth your credits. Just buy something else, like the Doom Turtle for the hell of it. I mean, you could enjoy that thing even more than Emil 2. So, Emil 1 is god tiered. Emil 2 is like casual silver, it's alright, but it's not going to compete. And the Cranbon is uh, his wood tier. <laughs> not even gonna make it. So, I've seen this pattern before. You have a great tier 8. Alright tier 9, and a lousy tier 10. So, it's like the tier tier into the FE4004 Conway, and into the FE4005 Stage 2, so... <laughs> so, 
So stop at the email one. Just trust me. Email one is god tier. Penetration, view range, turret armor, gun depression, speed, mobility, view range, health. Oh my god, holy crap. Just get that thing. <laughs> Give it to me now. It's like the T-92 uh, light tank. It's just insanely good at what it do. And it performs double duty as a medium and as a heavy. Holy crap, give it to me now. But there you go, folks. The tier 8 and the tier 9 Swedish heavy tanks. So hopefully you guys a little bit better, know a little bit better about the what <laughs> the insane upcoming Swedish vehicles. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.